Hi, I'm Steve Pope, and I'm here with Peggy DeBay at the Flower Nook. And we're going to do some series in the future that, that I think will interest the viewer a lot. This, this particular place or business has been in business for how many years, Peggy? Flower Nook's been in Alliance since 1954. 1954. That's history. And to me, that is part of why the Flower Nook has done so well, because it has built its own legacy. With that, it's expanding now into artworks, all kinds of things. So we're going to talk with Peggy today a little bit about all the things that happened and how it happened. So you were mentioning earlier that originally it was configured differently. Yeah, we were on Santa Fe with a full set of owners. Um, on Santa Fe, we were on an aerial building. Um, and then we had a front staff would take the order and we'd run it to the back. And then we would just fill it. We never knew the person, circumstances, it was was kind of an assembly line, you know, heartless job. It was not very fulfilling. When we lost that lease and we had to find a new place, this thing here was a derelict and we got to build it up, which was a problem that Jenna was experienced because we took every barrier down. So our customer became our consumer and we now let them come right up to the bench. They picked the vase, they picked the flowers, they watch us design. But the best thing about it that we didn't know, the experience was that by uh, connecting to the person by hearing their story about why they were sending flowers, and sometimes with tears, and sometimes with laughter, and sometimes with pain, it made us a better floors because we then understood their process and how to get their family. Yeah, so the human element comes into the picture, which is a lot of times happens, in, especially businesses today. Of course, I'm dating myself by saying there was a time when whoever, uh, whatever business you came and visited to purchase, they knew you, they knew your taste. Uh, it was not the uh, cubicle or the uh, mall kind of thought as it used to be shop in the community and people would do things like buy for you and know that that would be your particular taste and so they said that when they would go to a market they would say oh so and so the family or whatever would live in something like this for this fall or with this spring that type of thing so i imagine it falls in the same realm of getting to know the people and one of the fascinating things about it is we were talking just a little bit earlier about how uh, peggy and her husband have, uh, Wayne Bay has uh, taken a, a, a new birth takes place, and so flowers are sent for the christening, for the for the to a new mother, and then it has a trail to it. Kind of share with us the trail of what that's what you see. Well, you don't get many young kids' birthdays, but you get dance recitals, and you get graduations, and then you get prom, and then you get a wedding, and then you get the birth again, and then kind of recycles so from the grandma, the mother, and the new child. And unfortunately, we get deaths so, you know, more, more than we like. But uh, we, we do have generations of family members that have used us because they're all dead and their grandma's dead. And we, we honor that and we feel very appreciative. One of the things we had talked about also in the book is, I think, probably really important for the viewer to hear is the importance of uh, importance, is that a word? <laughs> the importance of having, uh, ha having relationships with not just individual communities uh, of people, but the whole community itself. Uh, how, how you came to some thinking about having to do more than just floral. Can you explain that to me? Well, we, we always were very serious about sharing the floral love uh, with, with our, not audience, but our customer, consumer, we always read the blog and the newsletter and all that kind of stuff. We always educate them on the words. But when Mars and Humanity said, let's downtown people, let's do First Thursday as a way to engage public with art. We were we'll right out there with the dog, it's a perfect, and then we were still at the old place. So when we moved over here, it's a perfect marriage. And then we start to realize that the customer wants to learn. We can be the mass. We can bring in people and share their expertise or their creative process. And everybody was happy with the completely alone Peggy to introduce something new you know, to the, the community. Change the culture of the planet, change the culture of the first party, 
change the culture of slow downtown by mirroring Jean Martin's work in the process with um, everyday living. Well, so that because we're coming up to the, the change of the city and the renovation and all the things yeah. that are going to take place. So uh, that's exciting. And, well, it's exciting, but it also has its a little scariness because everything will be changing on the outside and new new streets and new pieces of work that will be done for the, for the actual city's uh, environment. But the businesses have got to survive through that period of time. So we've got to be able to create and innovate created and also a, a big collaboration with your friends. Not just downtown merchants that rely on their art friends and their community to help you get through that. Well I think the end product will be worth it. I think the overall and I'm not going to paint doom and gloom as much as it's a process that we will go through. Kind of exciting, but we also need to make sure that we keep businesses yeah. thriving and continue to grow. Well, one of the things that we've worked on, and I think Peggy and the, the Nook has outdone themselves this time, is what we call Lips of War. Now that's that's right in tune with the with the uh, February uh, holiday, it was obviously Valentine's Day, but it's a unique approach. And so I'd like for you to uh, kind of explain where did this house got started, and you had a tremendous turnout from what I understand. Mm -hmm. Success. You know, this brainstorm came way back in October as I started to put 2018 from my back wall. I was always having artists on the back wall, and I wanted to be love related. I wanted to be a complimentary of you know, the season. And there were two, well, there were several, but there were two uh, merchants at that same meeting, and they were also saying, What can we do? What can we do to get out in the year? And I said, Kind of as a food. Let's do something together. <laughs> Let's all you know, what a collaboration. Let's do it together. Yeah. And we actually met three or four times to decide what we could do, how we could do it, and we got it all planned up. And then we kicked it off in January with a call to lips. Mm -hmm. you know, and we said, we just want your lips. We want you to come in and not, not put lipstick on, but paint them in a strange but artistic way. And then we will mount them on the wall. Several people laughed. Several people said, not only no, but you know, most definitely no. But many, many, many people said, it sounds like that. Well, and the other piece of that is, is, is the creating process again takes place. And even with the people that are modeling, they have a piece of their part of them that they didn't maybe realize that was yeah. there. So tell me a little bit about how the artistry took place. So you have a couple of people you mentioned. Yeah, we worked with Avon uh, here in downtown Mill Phillips, and then we worked with them also from their cave. So you went into their stores for the actual painting. Uh, we provided them uh, with accessories, feathers, rhinestones, uh, uh, bugs, and uh, then we'd say to them, if you have something that makes us think of you, and people did. We bought cereal, uh, we, we got spaghetti on the wall, people bought butterflies in. And it was like, how do we, when they put the lips on, they kind of went to a different character. My, my regret was that they couldn't wear their lips to some kind of other way. So their persona could be seen yeah, elsewhere. Because we just did it and then we did them a, you know, a tissue wipe, we were making a makeup premiere. It was with the quickness, it was gone. It was just a memory on that. Well, the memory has been photographed and there's been some great artwork that's been done with it. It's really exciting to, to have that kind of activity in the community. And I'm, I'm really so pleased to hear that the collaborative process of not just a business, but two or three businesses working together to, to uh, bring a, a even stronger connection to the community. Yeah, it was a great downtown effort. We've got between ages 6 and 89 on that wall, men and women. So we just, we're just very pleased and we thank the people that came out. And tonight when they come, if they come back, we're going to get the tube of lipstick. So they all get a tube of lipstick, even the guys? Yes. So they can oh, go home, it's in their little sample. So they can go home and do their own little... So they can play lips at home. Yes. Well, always something creative going on <laughs> here at the Nook. Uh, also, you have some artwork in front of the uh, extraordinary uh, area. We, uh, we make the statement, art is the heart of the community because that's what we feel. 
as we were trying to change the culture of the Paris humanities, we thought there was a good time to was a game play on the word art. So we did a call out to artists and give them your five by seven. Any media you want, they will hang it. They will just borrow it. And, uh, we got 74 pieces. Mm -hmm. so, well, I know when we've been talking, they have been going through and showing some of the collage itself. Again, the diversity is just amazing, amazing. Everything from I saw Meryl Monroe lips <laughs> one of them, and uh, other pieces that you could identify with. Others you would say, well, that's strange. What, what, you know, and you start doing that, interpreting with what, what did that mean? What, what are they trying to communicate? And sometimes it just is what it is, and that itself can be fun. Another piece of collaborative effort, from what I understand, you had you had people come in um, that had been artists that had worked with you before, but you had some new people come in. We had some people brand new. In fact, we have a lady who's never been hurt ever before. She's newer than I am, so I'm not going to think what that is. <laughs> but retired and just said, I want to start it. The idea of pieces. She had four pieces and they were excellent. And so that, in fact, she'll be back tonight um, to meet with the art on the other side. So I, Kind of like an open the door for us, you know, several books to be future for that personal goal for her to. And, and the art, well, that's the lips or the face, once again, to my surprise, because I don't pre plan. I'm not as smart as people think about pre planning. You just kind of like, hey, we made this me too. But the collaboration and how much fun they had talking to each other, talking about it, they've been on Facebook, they have shared photos. You know, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Several ladies brought in photos from people because they sent them in from different tales. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I I just couldn't be more uh, humbled for it and honored. Well, that is awesome. When you get that, again, community stir and buzz. And one of the th things being a part of Salina now that's been very um, rewarding for me is seeing how many different areas of art and creative processes that go on in this community and the arts of humanity and, and the different, uh, different uh, art places. And we're opening up even more from what I understand. So as that progresses, guess what? Salina is becoming well known for its creative processes. So next month, you've got something else coming. This is a whole different process, right? Kind of give us a little bit of... Well, to give it a hint, I like to kind of unveil it towards the end, but every month we do back wall. Every month. Uh, and that black wall gets painted every six months to the different color. And next month, so I've got an arch on the back wall that asked me to kind of unveil it a little later on. But I do have a coin collection coming, a rare coin collection. Uh, I'm bringing, uh, he said, over 100 pieces to show off with that process. We've got two new artists coming. The other side will have the BYOA to bring later in the art. So we've got several just constantly in the so all the way up to, we've got the whole year really all the way up to what's happening. Which again is exciting. It's exciting to know that there's always going to be something taking place, not only here, but in the entire community. And all you have to do is reach out. And I know you guys do a good job of advertising on uh, the social media. Uh, rounds and things of that nature. This is just another vehicle to help the city become more of what it already is. But I think that's important. We've been looking at different things during this time, the little collages, and so we're going to go back to uh, letting you look at some more of these framed pictures of lips. If anyone would like to call in and give their comment or write on any of the talks, uh, the uh, social networks, how would they do that? Would they well, every one of our networks has got a place you can comment in on, and we're happy to have a conversation. We're happy to have you come in. We're happy to have your art. We can go to the showcases, but you know, the art of the NIP has its own email address, it's on all of our literature, and Access TV has got us. So you know, that's a good place to go and see not only this building, but the other building too. Yeah. Again, since the social media and media itself is changing so much, uh, even Access Television is in the process of changing, changing the name, offering new services. So once again, it's a piece of the city growing. So thank you, thank you for uh, spending some time with us, and we look forward to next month's surprise. All right? Okay, sounds great. Bye.